looking in and I said, don't, don't answer. And I started looking a little bit closer, a little bit better, and I saw a police car. And I said, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I'm a nurse. I haven't done anything. It was a police car and I answered the door. These are the words. Are you Sharon Bumgarner Settler? Yes. Are you the mother of Crystal? And I said, yes. He said, she's dead. Crystal? What? Not my Crystal. He said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I said, I was just with her six days ago. I just went shopping at Walmart with her. She just got out of jail. She was clean. She was healthy. She had gained weight. She said, Mom, I'm reformed. Mom, I'm a new person. I said, not my crystal. Ma'am, here's a phone number. You can call the Huntington Police Department if you want more information. I'm sorry. Have a good night. I screamed. I cried. My husband held me. That's how I was told that my daughter, that was clean, that I just spent time with, was gone. So what now? What do I do? What do I do? It couldn't be. So I called the Huntington Police Department, just like he told me to do. And guess what his words were? I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes, it is your crystal. Someone threw a towel over her face and left her dead. Left a towel. That's what I have to remember about losing my daughter. Someone threw a towel over her face and ran. Guess what, guys? That's the one more time that you think that you can do. Go out for a good time, one more time. Do you think for a minute that you know what you're putting in your veins that one more time because now you have no clue? Hers was carfentanil. Hers was the elephant tranquilizer. I'm sure Crystal was probably doing that one more time for a good time. But are you really ready for that one last time? Because that's what it was for her. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no junkies in my vocabulary. There's no words add. Uh, I'm sorry. Junkies doesn't come out. Druggies doesn't come out. You all are beautiful people that are waiting to be discovered as the hero that's deep down inside. And once you accept Christ into your life, wait till you see what happens. You'll be reaching out to pull the other ones right up with you. That's what happens. I'm going to tell you what happened. After she died, I continued to work. I'd go to work and I'd hear all these little, oh, these little comments would just burn me up. Well, it's their own fault. If they're that stupid, they should have never done it in the first place. I was getting so angry, and I'm not an angry type person, but don't talk about our babies. She was beautiful. She was sweet. She was kind. Left four babies behind. Don't talk about my child. Mommy claws come out. So I told a friend at work, I said, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. I can't harbor this anger. I can't do it. I said, can you help me make a page? Something to honor her as the beautiful girl she was. She said, let's do it. A page. I said, I need a name for it or something. In two minutes... This girl, who's a beautiful, young, 25-year-old Christian girl, said, I got it. I said, what? She said, find the hero in you. Heroin. Find the hero in, spelled heroin, in you. So a lot of people get in this page and they see heroin and they jump right back out.
they jump right back out of it because they don't belong there until they find out how to pronounce my group. Well, that page started, getting back to it. Boy, I'm nervous. <sighs> that page started, and it started to grow, and it started to grow. People started getting interested. That page, in a matter of no time, had a thousand people. It's like, what? Because we decided, when that page started to grow a little bit, and I got a couple people to help me with it, we decided from day one, it was going to be God first. There wasn't going to be any filthy talk. There wasn't going to be putting down people that were recovering or active or whatever with addiction. It wasn't going to be allowed. It was going to be God first. And see where it would go. Now today, going on 7,000 people, which is reached all over the world. In her memory, I promised her four children, her death will not be in vain. Amen. She will not be forgotten. Amen. She will not be thought of as a druggie. She will be remembered as your beautiful mother. And I have not stopped since the day of her death on September the 16th of making a difference. And what I do when I'm not working is my hand is out, my heart is ready. I'm ready to find recovery with the people that work this group with me. When you're ready for recovery, I'm ready to go out and help find it. It's, one, it's that simple. It takes two words. I'm ready or help me. That's the two words that I want to hear. If you're sitting home and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I wish there was something we could do. Wishing won't get it done. Sitting at home saying, I wish it would change. It's not going to change sitting at home. One person, if one person's life is changed by today, it's worth every minute. Amen. And that's what it's all about. It's a mission of people together for the same purpose. And I want people to live because of her death. If I had to lose my daughter for others to be saved. It's hard to say when you're the mother that it's worth it all. But I'm here. And I'd love to have you join me in the fight. Dwayne, all the rest of the guys that I have some timers can't remember your name. <laughs> but I love you all dearly and I'm here for you. Find the hero in you. Find who you really are. Change your life today. Don't wait for tomorrow. You've got it. You can do it. I know you can. restless. Um, I think uh, anyone who has a caring heart, a loving heart, the heart of Christ is going to be out um, trying to help others. And um, uh, it's like I said, it's an honor to be here today. We're going to let little Molly sing. I'm going to let her uh, say a special prayer first um, and pray for us all. Pray for those recovering. Pray for the younger generation that's coming up. My sister and I have both uh, done foster care and adopted, and it's it's very hard. Um, it, it's it's hard on these kids, and we love them and we want to show our support. Um, 
I watched a documentary, I'll say this real quick, about a lady named uh, Sister Rosetta Tharp. And she was a black singer during the time um, of all the segregation. And uh, a lot of people referred to her as a divine lady. She would come and she would sing people into liberty because she herself was free within her own heart. So that's what uh, our desire is to do, is to sing about freedom and to uplift the name of Jesus Christ and to declare that there is freedom and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Molly, can you lead us in a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life. Help the ones in the nursing homes, Lord. We hope that everyone stays safe. Lord, we're sorry for someone's loss, Lord. We hope that we all have a great day, Lord, and we hope that no one forgets her, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing about Joshua. <laughs> Joshua fought the battle. We're in a spiritual battle. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. 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 Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. And the wall came to the window. And talk about your man. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the wall came tumbling down. Right up to the wall of Jericho, they marked his spear and Joshua told the children to mark the day, and the wall came tumbling down. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Then the player and sheep horns begin to blow, and the trumpets begin to sound. Joshua told the children to march that day, and the walls came tumbling down. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and your walls came tumbling down. Woo! I got my hand on the gospel plow. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. So keep your hand on the plow.
Well, at this time, we have a, um, another gentleman that's going to come speak for us. Um, he um, has been working with me for about the past m month now. Um, first time I ever met uh, Dwayne, um, we went to a meeting in Huntington together. And um, absolutely nobody showed up but six of us. Dwayne... His family and um, Alan and myself. So um, I'm going to ha have him come on this time. At this time, he has a message he wants to say, and uh, uh, let's give him a round of applause. Here. I don't need that. I'm dangerous. I've hurt somebody. My mouth's big, and I speak from the streets. I think everybody should give their own selves a round of applause just for being here today. Come on. Yay! You know what? I like to see a crowd motivated. I like yeah. to see people up and moving. You have to put the crowd on the front of the quit talking and listening. That's right. That's what it's about. Everybody needs to quit talking and need to start listening. You need to get some education. They need to learn. What that magic word needs to go away? It starts with an S. Oh, Sharon. Sharon. You didn't forget, forget stigma, surely, sweetheart. Stigma oh, well, well, well. needs to go away. Stigma is killing as many people as this drug itself. Believe that. Believe that. See, I like getting out here getting crowd fired up. Look at that smile. Look at that. You guys are ready. Are, are you ready for what's next? I don't know what's next. No, I don't come pre scripted. I don't come for some paper. I don't come from the courthouse. I might come from the jailhouse, but I'm coming to you straight from the streets every day. What do we see on the streets? A lot. We see ambulances everywhere we go. We see death around every corner. Sometimes we get lucky. We didn't see a child saving us. Sometimes we're there to save that child. That's what we see. see? We don't sit behind a typewriter typing a message saying, I want to help. I want to do this. I want to do this die, or those should die, or everybody deserves what they get. You know what? We're out on the streets. We're preaching it to you every day. Our church is on Highway 64. It's on Interstate 77. It's on Highway 79. Amen. It's in Salem, Ohio. It's in Detroit, Michigan. Amen. Everywhere. 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 That's just a part of our you see, I get out, I, I like to get fired up, you know? If I get fired up, I'm going to fire you up. Are you fired up? Right on, brother. Right on. Right on. See, that's what we need. We need to get everybody fired up. If we get everybody fired up, we can start opening that door to end this epidemic before it turns pandemic. That's right. Pastor, before it comes to your house. Before it comes to your Believe me, people, anybody out there can hide behind their rock, their fancy home, in your trailer, on your Harley. It does not discriminate. That's right. It don't care who you are, what church you're with, what part of government you sit on. That's right. Your family's susceptible. It does not discriminate. That's right. You now, I get a little hot under the collar when I start talking, so excuse me. I'm going to turn into Superman for you. Would you hold that for me, sir? Thank you. You know what? We're heroin hurts. We're on the streets every day. And this is what I have to say to everybody out there. Are we going to quit? No. Not today. Are we going to quit tomorrow? No. Not tomorrow. What are we going to do? We're going to reverse the hearse. We're going to bring life back. Are you going to help us? Are you going to be yeah. there? Are you yeah. going to support us? Yes. Is your family going to support us? Yes. Are we going to do this? Come on, let's make some noise. Yes. 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 All right. Keep right. Out on the streets, let me tell you what we have. We have funding from our pockets to run two, two vehicles. Run those two vehicles at seven, eight, nine miles a gallon on an 800-mile weekend. Pay for two hotel rooms. Do it out of your pocket. That's what we run on. You know what we run on more than that? 
I know we run in our Father's hands. That's right. That's right. What we live on on the streets, we live on hope. That's right. Notice the three nails of the cross in that hope. Those three nails of the cross are Jesus' cross. Hope is all we have on the streets. That's right. Now, coming together collectively is what we need to do. Right here today, folks, before you, you have a new beginning. You have find the hero in you, and you have heroin on hers. You have three. Three of many. See, we have typewriters, too. We sit on there and we type our messages, don't we, Sharon? But where, where, are, where, are, where are we at today? Where are we at right now? In the public. We're together. No. Right on. Now, the public can come on and come together. Right on, brother. Right on, brother. We're going to make those things again. That's right. That's right. We're going to make them. You guys going to help us make those changes? Yes. Hiding from it. Not helping you any. No. You know, I almost wore my county jail shirt with a prison number on it <laughs> to remind everybody what they were doing to their children by hiding this in Yes. Our children need to learn this at a great school level. Yes, they do. You're hiding this epidemic from your children. You're giving them a prison, a prison sentence. You're giving them a death sentence. You're giving them a ride in one of those. Is that what you want to do? Absolutely not. Think about that. God bless you all. Love you. Love you. Bye.